Hi everyone. For today's session, we are going to see about vasoactive peptides. What are what is vasoactive peptides and what are the various types of vasoactive peptides? That's what we are going to see. So vasoactive peptides or the peptides used by most tissues for cell-to-cell -cell communications. They're usually found in ANS and CNS, usually released with neurotransmitters. They have got effects on the smooth muscles as well as another vascular areas. Vasoactive peptides are of two types. One is vasoconstrictors and the other one is vasodilators. Vasoconstrictors. Vasoconstrictors, examples of vasoconstrictor peptides are renin angiotensin, vasopressin, neuropeptide Y, urotensin, and endothelins. Vasodilator peptides, examples are bradykinin or kinins, natriuretic peptides, VIP, vasoactive intestinal peptide, neurotensin, substance P, CGRP, migraines, and adrenomedulin. So we are going to see about vasoconstrictors as well as vasodilators. Okay, what are the various actions of these peptides? First, initially we are going to see about vasoconstrictors. The topmost one is renin angiotensin system. Kidney is responsible for long-term control of blood pressure and it also controls the volume of blood in our body. Renin angiotensin system, hormonal system, which regulates our BP, fluid balance and homeostasis. Whenever there is a reduction in the blood volume, baroreceptors in the kidney detect the drop in BP and stimulate the production and the release of renin in the kidneys. Renin angiotensin system, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 by the enzyme renin. The renin is synthesized from the pre-pro-hormone pro-renin. So this angio 1, angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme called ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. And the 2 is converted to angiotensin 3 by amino peptidase enzyme. So all these vasoactive peptides are very, very essential for a normal human being functions. Okay. So the same thing we'll see here. Initially, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 by renin. It is secreted by pro-renin. This 1 is converted by ACE, converting enzyme to angiotensin 2. The 2 is converted to angiotensin 3 by amino peptidase and 3 to peptide fragments. Okay. So all this angiotensin 1, 2, 3 and the renin is essential for to maintaining the BP in our body. Whenever there is an abnormal secretion, then only the problem comes. The problem here is increase in blood pressure. The renin secretion it is synthesized in the kidneys, released in response to the decreased in BP, stretch the renal vascular stretch receptors. It decreases the rate of delivery of CL and Na plus to the distal tubule. Increased renal nerve activity by epinephrine, norepinephrine, increasing all this neurotransmitters along with calcium. First one is angiotensinogen. It is synthesized from the liver. The production is increased by corticosteroids, estrogen, thyroid hormones, and angiotensin 2. So all of these are associated with the hypertension. Whenever there is an abnormal secretion of all these things, it will lead to increasing blood pressure. The next step is angiotensin. Renin stimulates the production of angiotensin. And angiotensin 2 causes arteries in the kidney to constrict and increases the glomerular filtration meaning it increases BP. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates the secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal gland. It causes the kidney to increase the reabsorption of sodium and water in the blood. Because of all these actions, it increases the blood pressure. Next is an enzyme, AC, angiotensin converting enzyme, dipeptidyl carboxypeptidase. It converts angiotensin 1 to 2. It also inactivates bradykinin. It cleaves with encapherins, substance free, 
and physiologic significance is unclear. It is widely distributed throughout the body. Whenever there is an increase in ACE, then automatically there is a need for angiotensin converting enzyme in the betas because this particularly enhances the BP of our blood. So that is why all this renin and angiotensin system is very, very essential for a normal healthy human being to maintain the blood pressure. So whenever there is an abnormal secretions, there is a need for inhibition of the system to some level because the abnormal secretions leads to hypertension. So that is why there is a need for inhibition of renin angiotensin system. Sympathetic blockers, sympathetic blockers, neuron blockers decreases the renin release. Renin inhibitory peptides and renin specific antibodies block the renin actions which interfere with a1 from angiotensin step. The example is Alice cream. ACE inhibitors, the third step, which prevents the generation of angiotensin 2. The examples are captopril, enalopril, ramipril, and lisnopril, which is very, very essential to control the blood pressure in many of the human beings, especially in hypertension. Next category is angiotensin receptor 2 antagonist, which block the action of conversion of A2 to A3. The examples are candisartan, irbisartan, losartan, and telmisartan. And one more antagonist, there is a need to control the blood pressure in hypertensive patients, aldosterone antagonist. It blocks the mineralocorticoid receptors, example, spironolactone. So next Vasoconstrictor is vasoactive peptides. The second example is vasopressin. It is very, very important in regulation of BP. Okay. It acts in the kidney to increase the water area absorption. Short term, it is a potent vasoconstrictor. As I told you, we need vasoconstrictors in our body to maintain the normal functions. Right? Whenever there is an abnormal secretion only, there is an increase in BP. So the normal role for all this vasoconstrictor is to increase the BP and to maintain it. Okay, This particular vasopressin binds to vasopressin 1A, 1B and B2 receptors. B1A controls the vasoconstrictor effects. So the drug terlipressin, it's an agonist. Okay, It's an analog of vasopressin. It is usually used to treat vasodilatory shock states and also used in hypotensive patients. This vasopressin antagonist also there is a need because whenever there is an abnormal secretion of vasopressin, it may lead to increase in blood pressure and lead to hypertension. For that reason, vasopressin antagonist are identified. The example is relcovapton. It is an 1A, V1A antagonist for Reynolds disease, vasospastic disorder and tocolysis for suppression of contractions especially in labor, to save the life of the baby, sometimes this is used. The second example is tolvaptone. It is a B2 antagonist, vasopressin 2 antagonist, used to treat hyponatremia. Whenever there is a reduction in the sodium level, it is not ideal for the patients. Then they'll go for B2 antagonist okay, to increase the sodium level in the patient's blood. The third example is cornivaptone. It is V1, V2 antagonist that is also used in hyponatremia. This is the second vasoconstrictor groups of vasoactive peptides. The third example in our body is vasoactive peptide is neuropeptide Y. This comes under the cat category vasoconstrictors, meaning it controls the blood pressure whenever there is an increase in it, automatically lead to hypertension. It's a very small peptide, contains only 36 amino acids, one of the most abundant in CNS and the peripheral nervous system. It is localized in noradrenergic neurons. It is a vasoconstrictor in the CNS, cardiovascular, renal areas. Its receptor antagonists are investigated especially to control hypertension and cardiovascular disorders and also for appetite suppression and anti-obese. For those patients who are obese, for those patients also in the case of depression, anxiety and the pain, neuropeptide by antagonist are used. Okay. Already this is under investigations. 
Next vasoactive peptides is urotensin, which comes under the group vasoconstrictors, which contains 11 amino acids. It is usually found in the brain, spinal cord, kidneys, plasma, heart, lungs, and liver. These are all very, very essential for a normal, healthy human being to push their body to increase the blood pressure. We need increase in blood pressure, but that should be maintained at the normal range. Okay, whenever it is in the normal range, then there is no problem. If it is secreted in a huge quantity, then only there is a need for an antagonist. So the antagonist which is available for urotensin is urantide and palosuron. It is usually used for renal disease and cardiovascular disorders. The next one is endothelin. Endothelin is also comes under vasoconstrictors. It is protein produced by the cells, constrict the blood vessels, and it raises the BP in cardiovascular area, lungs, and the kidneys, which decreases the water and sodium excretion automatically whenever there is an increase in sodium and water absorption, increase in blood pressure. So the endothelin is available in the areas of ET1, endothelin 1. 2 and 3 vasoactive peptides. It comes under three groups, ETA1, ETB1 and beta receptors. So overproductions of endothelin causes hypertension, cardiac hypertrophy, atherosclerosis. You all know what is atherosclerosis. There will be cholesterol deposits in the blood vessels, myocardial infarctions and coronary artery disease. So nobody wants to produce endothelin in huge quantity. Whenever there is an increase in production of endothelins, automatically it leads to all this disorders. That is why there is a need for endothelin antagonist. Mesenton, it is a competitive antagonist of endothelin A, beta receptors. Okay, it is used for pulmonary artery hypertension. So antagonist is usually used in hypertension, especially this endothelin antagonist is used in pulmonary artery hypertension. There is one more endothelin antagonist, which is called as ambricenton. It is an antagonist of ETA receptor. It is used for pulmonary artery hypertension. Both of this antagonists are used in PAH and also other cardiovascular disorders. We'll quickly see this picture. So this is the endothelin pathway. This ECA is produced and endothelin, there is an increase in production of endothelin. And these are all A receptors and B receptors. So the endothelin receptor antagonist, whatever you have seen, will act at this area, which controls the blood pressure, especially in the lungs. Okay, pulmonary artery hypertension only, endothelin antagonist are used. Next comes vasodilator peptides. So far you have seen vasoconstrictor peptides. Now you can see about vasodilator peptides. The various vasodilator peptides which is secreted in our bodies are bradykinin or kinins and natriuretic peptides, vasoactive intestinal peptides, VIP and neurotensin, substance P and CGRP, which is responsible for migraines and adrenomedulin. These are all vasodilators, meaning which dilates the blood pressure. That is why there will be reduction in the blood pressure and the blood volume. We'll see what is their actions. The first one is topmost one is kinins. It is formed by the enzymatic activity of calicrinins on protein substrates called kininogens. There are three types of kinins in mammals, which is called as bradykinin. That is the first one released by the plasma calicrinin. The second one is lysyl bradykinin released by the tissues in the calicrinin cells. And third one is methanyl lysyl bradykinin released by pepsin-like enzymes. All these three are essential for us, but that should be secreted at the normal range. The renin system controls angiotensin 1, and the conversion of two and the three we have seen. So the kininogen or the vasodilators, they are all vasoconstrictors, which causes increase in blood pressure. Whenever there is an increase in blood pressure, automatically kininogen is secreted and the bradykinin is secreted, which reduces the blood volume and the blood pressure. That is why for a, for a normal healthy woman, human being, there is a no need for any anti-hypertensive drugs. What is the effect of kinins? Kinins are potent vasodilators. They are in heart, liver, kidney, intestine, and the skeletal muscles. The vasodilator effects will be directly, it produces its action directly or indirectly. So by producing direct actions, it inhibits the effect of vascular smooth muscles, 
an indirect action it stimulates the release of nitrous oxide or other vasodilators like prostaglandins it also induces the brief drop in bp when administered in iv so emergency cases this can be given in iv to reduce the blood pressure drugs affecting the kinin system receptor antagonist for inflammations and the nociceptive pain is available so this kinin system also we need secretion at a normal range whenever there is an abnormal secretions it produces inflammations and reduction in blood volume and automatically it produces because of inflammations there is a lot of pain for that reason antagonist are identified so the antagonist which is available is actipent b2 receptor antagonist used to treat bradykinin induced angioedema swelling of the dermis and the mucosa in airways which is very difficult for the patients to breathe gi tract extremities and genitalia calicrenin inhibitors examples are aprotinin and ecalanctide so they are also available this will be used in a very rare situation these are all some of the life saving drug to control the vasodilator actions of kinins next category is natriuretic peptide the vasodilator example here is natriuretic peptides which is secreted it has got no therapeutic drugs targeting the synthesis or the receptors for those particular peptide this is uh, available as two category a and b and b and b metabolized by neutral peptidase so the it oma patrilate inhibits the secretion of neb neb is nothing but natriuretic peptides this particular drug also inhibits ace inhibitors ace enzyme also it inhibits it promotes the natriuresis vasodilation used to treat hypertension and congestive heart failure okay so the oma patrilate which is a drug which is identified it's an agonist of natriuretic peptide which is produces vasodilation it promotes natriuresis so that is why this particular drug is used in hypertension and chf so what is the physiology of natriuretic peptides natriuretic peptides this is available as two categories one is a and b and the b and b that is a neutric peptide and b neutric natriuretic peptide okay this natriuretic peptide is a neutral endopeptidase it produces clearance decreases the vascular growth decreases the blood pressure increases the sodium and water excretion by all this mechanism it produces reduction in the blood volume as well as reduction in the blood pressure so this is how this is very very essential peptide for a normal being this natriuretic peptide system is overwhelmed in an acute compensated heart failure patients automatically our body has got a mechanism whenever there is an increase in blood pressure automatically this particular enzyme is secreted and it brings back the normal functions of the heart the third vasodilator is small peptides glucagon secreting family it is widely distributed throughout the body cns pns it's a potent vasodilator it is particularly uh, produced in a cardiovascular system it activates gbcrs it is available as vip c1 c2 types of several drugs currently in the development analogs as well as agonist and even receptor antagonist is also under investigations the third this is the third one next vasodilator is substance p many effects vasodilation inflammation and pain it binds to neurokinin receptors nk1 and nk3 substance p has got i affinity towards nk1 it is usually found in the vomiting center in the brain it has got several antagonist is available as an antiemetic okay if substance p is secreted in a huge quantity there is a need to control its action that is why since this is mainly present in the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the brain which is a vomiting center whenever this particular peptides get activated the patients will go to lot of vomiting so to control that antiemetics antagonist of substance p is available the examples are apripitent osapripitent and vestipitent and casopitent is under development the next vasodilator is functions as neurotransmitters 
as well as neuromodulus in the central nervous system. It's a vasodilator. It usually modulates DA glutamate neurotransmission. This is available as NT R1, R3 types. R1, R2, and R3. Agonist and antagonist is unavailable. It causes CNS disorders. If this neurotransmitter, neurotensin is secreted along with the neurotransmitters, it produces schizophrenia, Parkinson's and alcoholism, which may patient go to drug abuse and other cardiovascular disorders. That is why we don't need this particular peptide in huge quantity. Whenever it is secreted in huge quantity, there is a need for drug to control all these disorders. Next, finally, the vasodilators is adenomedulin, ADM. ADM is a potent vasodilator peptide. Its effects are mediated through CAMP as well as nitric oxide dependent mechanism. ADM gene is modified endothelial progenitor cells and have been shown to incorporate into the lung tissue and attenuate pulmonary hypertension. Okay, the administration of ADM either by intravenous or intrathecal routes significantly decreases the pressure in the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary vascular resistance in patients with pulmonary hypertension, this particular ADM is controlled to decrease the pressure in the heart as well as lung tissues, mainly in the arteries. Sometimes this particular drug is recommended whenever there is an increase in production of vasoconstrictors. Okay, so whatever the vasodilators as well as vasoconstrictors you have seen so far is very, very essential for each one of us for a normal functions. Whenever there is an abnormal secretions, then only the problem comes up. So these are all some of the vasoactive peptides which is secreted and the mechanism of actions, what they produce in each one of us. Okay, so quickly we'll see the basic functions whatever these vasodilators producing in our body, how it controls all these actions. Okay. So whenever there is a blood volume and blood pressure, whenever there is a reduction, the baroreceptors in the kidney gets activated. Okay, automatically it makes the blood to secrete angiotensin in the blood and ADH is secreted from hypothalamus and control center in the cardiovascular and medulla oblongata gets activated. Because of all these actions, the adrenal cortex liberates aldosterone and the kidney conserves salt and water and automatically renin is secreted, plus blood vessels constrict, heart rate and contractibility increases. Then this action produces increase in blood volume, increase in systemic vascular resistance, increase in blood pressure. Whenever somebody goes into hypotension, automatically all this baroreceptor is secreted and most of the vasoactive peptides are secreted, which has got vasoconstrictor actions are secreted. Okay. Once all this enzyme and the peptides are secreted, automatically there is an increase in blood pressure and it comes to the normal blood pressure. Blood pressure increases and maintained at the normal range. Okay, if so, there is a sudden increase in the blood pressure because of all these excessive secretions, automatically the message goes to this area, then it comes to the normal range. So this is what happening in a normal healthy human being. Whenever there is a reduction, automatically the information goes to all these areas. The vasoconstrictor peptides are secreted and the blood pressure is brought to the normal range. Okay. And automatically, the other vasodilators are secreted and it controls and brings back to homeostasis. And once these vasodilators are secreted and then the blood volume decreases, information goes to this area and this is secreted in a normal range and bring back to homeostasis and the normal range. If it is increases, automatically it will go to message. Vasodilators are secreted at this range and vasoconstrictors are secreted in this area. Okay, that is why we are able to live in this world without any drug up to certain age with a normal blood pressure. But whenever something goes wrong only, whenever there is an increase in secretion of all these peptides, whatever you have seen for this class, whenever there is an abnormal secretion, then only the problem comes. Either hypotension, mainly hypertension, increase in blood pressure. There is a need for a drug to prolong the life. Okay, I hope you got an idea about all these vasoactive peptides. You, you all enjoy this session.
Thank you.